So my video on the unboxing of my Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series laptop model 7569 has been a pretty popular video. So I thought I'd make a follow up video after the unboxing and talk about what turned out good and what didn't, what I liked and what I've had problems with. First, to recap why I bought this particular model, I was looking for a laptop with at least a 500 gig solid state drive. I wanted a 1080 IPS screen because I was sick of my last laptop 720p crappy screen that had a viewing angle of basically zero because there was no angle where you could look at it and actually see the whole screen, right? I wanted a touch screen even though I don't use it much. I had one on the last laptop and I thought it would kind of be a step backwards to go without it. So then I had the idea that if I got a two-in-one where you can fold it back and use it as a tablet, that might make the touch screen more useful. I kind of wanted a backlit keyboard. It wasn't a major requirement, but it's kind of nice. And I just, in general, wanted a better built, better quality laptop. And I, I think I got what I wanted, basically. I like the solid state drive. It makes programs load crazy fast. I can click like Chrome and bam, there it is. I won't ever have a computer without a solid state drive as the operating system drive again. And you probably shouldn't either. It makes a huge difference. It makes it way faster. You could have a computer with a lot faster processor and a slow mechanical hard drive and you still end up sitting there waiting when you click icons for stuff to load and it drags the whole thing down while it's waiting for a mechanical hard drive to spin up. So get a solid state drive in your computer, you'll be satisfied. So I do like the screen, that turned out well. The keyboard has a, you know, it's a laptop keyboard. You know, it's never gonna be as good as a good quality desktop keyboard, but for a laptop keyboard, it's great. It has a lot better feel than my old laptop. And I like the backlight too. It makes it a lot easier to see your typing when you know, you're, say, in the evening, sitting on the couch, browsing the web or something, and you can't, and it's kind of dark, and you can't quite see the keyboard. It's got a pretty good long battery life. It's lived up to its battery life on that, and I like the thin design. It's a thin, lightweight laptop, although the thin design has a couple drawbacks to get into the things that I don't really like. Um, I would have rather have had a number pad on the side over here, because I do do some work in like Excel and stuff where you type a lot of numbers. It took me a while to get to the, used to the keyboard actually being centered on the laptop. I would miss keys because my old laptop, the keyboard was off to the side and had the number pad over here. But after a few months now, I'm used to the center keyboard. It, it works pretty good. The thin design, you have to make a couple sacrifices. Like it doesn't come with a CD drive. So I ended up buying a external USB, well, DVD drive for the a couple occasions. I've actually had where I had to install software off of a CD, so I do want to have a drive around. It doesn't have a wired LAN, but, you know, with a laptop that thin, there really isn't room to even put an RJ45, you know, Ethernet port on the side of it. If I really cared about that, I suppose I could get a USB to Ethernet adapter. would have been nice to have that a couple of times when I was setting up, like, a Wi-Fi router or something, and you mess up the setup, and you can't actually log in on the Wi-Fi anymore, and it would have been nice to have a LAN port to be able to plug in fix an issue like that. It's got a couple other minor issues I haven't liked it, although a couple of them might have just been fixed. One was system sounds, like when you plug in a USB device or something and it does the device connect sound or anything that has a little short notification sound. You really never heard the notification sound because it took a second for the speakers to come on and by the time the speakers came on the sound was over. So short little sounds, like the USB connect sound, you wouldn't even hear it. I had another issue that popped up occasionally where the volume control would quit working. Mute would work, so if you ran it all the way down to zero, the sound would go off, but anything above zero was just 100% volume. And I would do things like go into the, uh, go into the services and restart the Windows audio just to get it back so the audio would work again. A couple days ago, I installed a new audio driver and so far i haven't seen that problem with volume control not working and the problem with the uh, with the audio not coming on for a second seems to have been cured as well so hopefully that's taken care of now 
I had a problem when I first got it that the auto rotate function actually didn't auto rotate, but that I don't know if I had a setting that was wrong or something, but that started working. And so you flip it in the two and one mode. It is kind of nice to use the two and one mode when you're reading something like a long blog post or something, because you can get a lot more onto the screen and you can scroll it up and down, but I don't really use that a lot. Another minor quibble is Dell really didn't follow the specification for USB 3.0 ports where you make the little tongue and they're blue. If you look on this side, it's got a USB port with a black plastic piece in it. And you look at this side, and it's got a USB port with a black plastic piece in it. And I thought maybe they were both USB 3 ports, so it didn't matter if they had the right colors on them or not, but I don't know about that because when I plug my flash drive into the right side port and I do a speed test on it with Crystal Disk Mark, on the right side port I only get 38 megabyte per second read speed and on the left side port I get 177 megabyte read speed. So I'm guessing the left side port is a USB 3.0 and the right side port is just USB 2.0. So they should have colored the left side one blue so you would know which was which. One minor issue with the 1080p screen is on a 15 inch 1080p screen stuff ends up a little bit too small to read. So by default Windows 10 sets itself to 125% scaling, but Windows has always had issues of blowing things up in scaling mode where stuff doesn't draw quite right. In Windows 10, it seems to be a lot better than it's been in previous versions of Windows, but I've still seen a few minor issues. One example I found recently is I was going to install a program, and the installer that comes up, if you look at the text here on the screen, the title bar where it says installer language is a lot clearer than the text where it says please select a language. If I pop up the screen properties and I kick it back to 100% instead of 125, then all the text is nice and clear. But the problem is at 100% scaling, Things are just a little bit too small to read most of the time. I mean, look at my network properties windows, like that big. <laughs> so I leave it at 125 because that makes the text big enough to be able to read everything. But you still get crisper text because of the 1080p screen. So it's a bit of a compromise, and hopefully Microsoft will fix that in the future. And that's a Windows 10 issue, not a Dell issue. So the biggest problem I have had with it by far is that Dell equipped this thing with a horrible Wi-Fi card inside. <laughs> it's an Intel dual band wireless AC3165. Um, it seems to not like to play with certain routers, in particular one that is a cheap Netis brand router that I installed at my parents' house as a second access point. Um, when I first got it, it would not connect to that router at all. The router would even freak out and kick everybody else off the network if this laptop tried to connect. I talked to Dell Tech Support and they blamed it on the router because this laptop is connected to every other router I've tried. Sounds logical. But the router, the Netis router, also works fine with every other device that is connected to it, which is about three other laptops, a couple smartphones, and a tablet. They all work fine. It just doesn't get along with this one. Uh, I'd have problems where it just wouldn't connect. If I went in and just did a ping of the router, just a continuous ping in the command window, it would just be dropping pings all the time. I'd get times that instead of being a few milliseconds were hundreds of milliseconds, even a couple thousand. It would just cut out and just totally miss pings that would just come back as it, it, as it didn't respond. I wondered if it was a could be a problem with Windows 10 and the Wi-Fi, but it wasn't because I can plug in this little TP-Link USB Wi-Fi adapter and everything works fine. So it's just this particular Wi-Fi card 
this Intel 3165 that just doesn't seem to get along with some routers. I think there's a problem with both the Wi-Fi and that particular router because like I said, the laptop connects to other routers fine, but other devices connect to that router fine. So it's just those particular two, there's something, they just don't get along with each other. But if you run the internet, you'll find literally hundreds of messages on message boards of people complaining about problems with this AC3165 and there's another one that's a 7,000 something model where people have problems with drop connections, um, just sporadic response. So to address that issue, I made a little purchase off of Amazon. So coming up soon in another video, I am going to have how to replace the Wi-Fi card in a Dell Inspiron laptop with a new one, hopefully. We'll see how that works out. So for quick recap, I love having the SSD. I love having the HD IPS panel. It's got a better keyboard. It's got long battery life. It lives up to its battery life. It feels solidly built. You can twist the screen or the body of the laptop and there's really very little, if any, flex. It doesn't creak or moan or groan or feel, you know, in any way. It's not solid. I like the thin design and I love the brushed aluminum type finish to it. It's a pretty good laptop except for the one big issue of the Wi-Fi being horribly flaky. So I think that sums it up. In all in all, it's been a pretty good laptop, and hopefully replacing the Wi-Fi adapter will fix that one big issue, and it'll work well for me for a long time to come.